Hello friends, in this video we shall discuss basic applied anatomy and range of motion of shoulder joint. Before coming to shoulder joint, basically regarding orthopedics, we should know three planes that is coronal, sagittal and axial. And this coronal plane divides our body into two equal halves, anterior and posterior. Sagittal, it is divided into two equal halves, right and left through the middle of the body. Axial is divided into superior and inferior halves. And this axial view is also known as transverse view or horizontal view. And regarding orthopedics, proximal and distal means proximal is near to heart and distal is away from heart. Upper arm includes the area between shoulder joint and elbow joint. Lower leg is in between knee and ankle. This is coronal plane, this is sagittal plane and this is axial plane. Coming to other basic terminologies, active range of motion includes the movement by patient itself. The movements possible to patient by itself and passive ROM includes the range of motion which is done by the examiner. Coming to the shoulder joint, we shall discuss the applied anatomy and range of motion in this particular video. Coming to the applied anatomy, actually the shoulder joint consists of glenohumeral joint. The true glenohumeral joint is the articulation between the glenoid cavity of scapula and head of the humerus. Head of the humerus is one third in opposition with the glenoid cavity. Other joints include the scapula, sternoclavicular joint, acromioclavicular joint, and scapulothoracic joint. Scapulothoracic joint is not an actual joint in which there is no synovial joint, but actually it is a physiological joint. And this sternoclavicular, acromioclavicular, and scapulothoracic movements functionally helps the shoulder joint to attain the complete array. In this picture, we shall able to see the sternoclavicular joint, acromioclavicular joint, acromion process, subacromial bursa, glenohumeral joint, supraspinatus muscle, biceps, and from a picture from behind shows supraspinatus muscle, infraspinatus, and terraspinatus. Rotator cuff muscles or musculotendinous cuff includes actually four muscles supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. In this, subscapularis muscle is attached anteriorly and it facilitates medial rotation of shoulder joint. Supraspinatus muscle is connected superiorly and it helps the initial abduction of shoulder. Initial abduction of shoulder is facilitated by supraspinatus and then deltoid muscle helps the further abduction and here posteriorly infraspinatus and teres minor muscle which helps the external rotation of shoulder joint. These four muscles constitutes of rotator cuff muscles. For checking the patency of supraspinatus muscle if we ask the patient to abduct the shoulder. If the patient shrugs like this, if the patient shrugs for initiation of abduction, then the patient's supraspinatus muscle is affected. In this picture, you shall able to see that external rotation of shoulder joint is restricted by the examiner. If the patient feels pain on the posterior side posterior side while doing this maneuver gives inference that infraspinatus and teres minor muscle is affected. In this photo, you shall able to see the shoulder joint is in internal rotation and the examiner pushes the hand of the patient and the patient pushes the hand towards the examiner and this test is called Gerber's lift off test. If the patient feels pain on the anterior side, then the subscapularis muscle is affected. 
This includes the ligaments of the shoulder joint. Here you shall see conoid ligament and trapezoid ligament, which is coracoclavicular ligaments. These two ligaments are important in while discussing the acromioclavicular joint subluxation. This is acromioclavicular ligaments, and here you shall see coracoacromial ligament, which prevents the superior displacement of head of the humerus. Here, coracohumeral ligament transverse humeral ligament and this is superior glenohumeral middle glenohumeral and inferior glenohumeral which is attached to the glenoid capsule that is joint capsule and gives more strength to the joint the stability of the shoulder joint consists of it is stabilized by these structures coracoacromial arch the rotator cuff muscles glenoid labrum which helps in deepening the glenoid fossa for the better attachment muscles attaching the humerus to the pectoral girdle long head of biceps and long head of triceps whenever there is wasting of muscles whenever we are giving rehabilitation to the shoulder joint we shall give rehab to all these structures coming to the range of motion of shoulder joint the range of motion includes flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal rotation, external rotation, and circumduction. Actually, when compared to other joints, shoulder joint has more mobility and less stability. First of all, the most important movement in shoulder joint is abduction, and the range of motion is 180 degree. First thing uh, you must know is that the glenoid cavity is 30 degree inclined to the horizontal plane so that abduction is not on the complete horizontal plane it is 30 degree inclined to the horizontal plane so that the flexion is also in 90 degree to abduction so that flexion is not directly forward it is 30 degree inclined to the forward plane the Normal range of motion of flexion is 90 degree and just opposite to flexion is extension and the normal range is 45 degree. The complete range of motion of abduction is 180 degree. When we do the abduction, just by tilting the head, the ear touches the deltoid muscle. It is the normal range of abduction and abduction itself gives more clue. That is, if the patient felt pain and if the patient feels difficulty, for the initiation of abduction, then supraspinatus muscle is affected. Whenever there is pain and discomfort in 70 degree to 120 degree, then there is painful R syndrome, which is due to five causes. One is supraspinatus tendinitis, second one supraspinatus tear, third one calcified supraspinatus, fourth one greater tuberosity fracture, and fifth one is subacromial bursitis. Whenever there is pain in the last 30 degree of abduction, final 30 degree of abduction, then it is due to acromioclavicular joint arthritis or due to acromioclavicular joint subluxation. In that condition, the final 30 degree of abduction is arrested. So that abduction itself gives more clue in the clinical diagnosis. Just opposite to abduction is adduction. Whenever we uh, touch us towards the opposite shoulder in this moment it helps in adduction it is the actual moment of adduction and medial rotation and lateral rotation is done in 90 degree flexed elbow and this is lateral rotation and towards the body is medial rotation actually the complete medial rotation of shoulder joint is this the patient is able to touch the opposite scapula opposite body of scapula it is the complete range of motion of internal rotation and it is 90 degree and of external rotation is 90 degree there is another range of motion also that is external rotation and internal rotation in 90 degree abduction here is not it is 90 degree abduction and this is external rotation in 90 degree abduction and this is internal rotation in 90 degree abduction here includes here we concludes the normal applied anatomy and range of motion of shoulder joint. Thank you.